All right, I get to do this again, huh? That's awesome. Welcome back, everybody. Day two of the show, First Thing with Kevin Mano. It's Tuesday, January 11th, 2022. Uh, Alexander Hamilton was born on this day many, many years ago. Either uh, 1755 or 1757. The internet isn't really sure. Uh, And then skip ahead a a couple centuries, and they made a play about the guy, Hamilton. I watched it. I learned a lot when I I saw one thing I never knew about him. He loved to rap and dance. (laughs) All right, your top stories today, uh, extreme cold here in the U.S. Boston public schools are going to be closed today in anticipation of the very low temperatures. Uh, Wind chills as low as 45 degrees below zero will be possible in parts of the country, like the upper Midwest and the uh, the New England area is going to get hit hard. They say it's the coldest air in three years. If you're dealing with this, if uh, if you're in that area, take care of your pets. Please check on the elderly. Be safe. Uh, This story is going to be everywhere today. It's pretty cool. In a medical first, uh, doctors just transplanted a pig heart into a man in a last-ditch effort to save his life at a Maryland hospital. And now, three days after the highly experimental surgery, actually when the uh, article was published yesterday, it was three days, so hopefully uh, on day four he's doing okay. But they said he was doing well yesterday. His name is David Bennett. He's 57. He was ineligible for a human heart transplant for whatever reason, so this was his only option. Uh, The scientific director at the hospital said, if this works, there will be an endless supply of these organs for patients who are suffering really, truly incredible. In the world of sports, Fox Sports just released the early Super Bowl odds for the 14 remaining NFL teams. And according to their algorithms, the Packers and the Chiefs have the best odds, while the Steelers and the Eagles have the worst. Both of those teams are from Pennsylvania. Sorry, Pennsylvania. And now that the uh, regular season is over, it's firing time. The Vikings just fired a coach. The Dolphins fired their head coach. The Bears, my Chicago Bears, they fired their head coach and general manager. Uh, In college football, Georgia won their first national title since 1980. Congrats, Georgia. They won last night. They beat Alabama to win the national championship. In baseball, the Yankees just named a woman to manage one of their minor league teams. Very cool. 34-year-old Rachel Balkovic got the job. That's a first in Major League Baseball history. All right, in entertainment news, I've got the latest on Bob Saget's passing. He was found in his Orlando area hotel room on Sunday around 4 p.m., uh, hotel staff went to check on him because he was supposed to check out earlier that day and his family couldn't get a hold of him. An autopsy was performed yesterday morning, and while the official cause of death may not be known for 10 to 12 weeks, the initial findings did show no evidence of drug use or foul play. Uh, and just last week, he was doing an interview and he said that he had just recovered from COVID and that it was, quote, not good. No idea if that contributed to his passing. And while we're all sad, uh, I have an update on Betty White. Her cause of death was just revealed. uh, She died from a stroke. It was a stroke that she suffered six days before she passed away. It's officially listed as a cerebrovascular accident, which is a loss of blood flow to part of the brain. Apparently, in those six days between the stroke and her passing, she was alert and coherent, um, and she died, we found out, peacefully in her sleep, thank goodness. And on Monday, which would have been her 100th birthday, we will still get that movie honoring her life. It's called Betty White, 100 Years Young, birthday celebration. I was worried that it, w- it would be, you know, shelved, but no, it's it's coming out on Monday. That's a great way to honor her. And a bit of positive entertainment news here. Judge Judy is funding full scholarships for 10 female law students at New York Law School. That's where she went to school. She graduated in 1965. Uh, since then, she's made a ton of money, and now she's given back. On to movie and TV news. Lots of TV news just came out. Grey's Anatomy and Ellen Pompeo both coming back for season 19 of Grey's. Uh, she's been pretty vocal in the past about, you know, possibly wanting to wrap it up. And I guess they're uh, they're not there yet. And with this news, there is no mention of season 19 being the last season. The show is going to go on forever. Uh, Emily in Paris was just renewed for seasons three and four at Netflix. I call it Emily in Paris. That's how I've heard people uh, say it. But I did hear the creator of the show a while back say that it's supposed to rhyme. It's supposed to be Emily in Paris. I'm not comfortable with that. Until I hear other people do it, I refuse to put myself out there like that. So I'll keep saying Emily in Paris. Uh, Also, The Morning Show is returning for season three on Apple TV+. And we just got our first look at Bel Air. That's the new uh, dramatic version of The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. It's going to be on Peacock. The trailer is up on our Instagram stories right now if you want to see it at First Thing Pod on Instagram. Uh, and one of my favorite shows that I've seen recently, White Lotus. Great show. It's getting ready for season two. It's going to be way different. It's apparently taking place at a completely different White Lotus resort uh, with, for the most part, a brand new cast. Aubrey Plaza, who you might know from Parks and Recreation, she was just added to this new cast. And there are rumors that Jennifer Coolidge will be returning. She's so great. 
On TV tonight, the Pearsons are back on your television. This is us on NBC. The second season premiere of Superman and Lois on The CW tonight. And just after that, the series premiere of a new superhero show called Naomi. Uh, and another new show called I Am Shauna Ray premieres tonight on TLC. This looks so interesting. It's a reality show about this 22-year-old woman who, due to a side effect of brain cancer that she had when she was a child, uh, she has the body and face of an 8-year-old. So she's a 22-year-old stuck in the body of an 8-year-old. That premieres tonight on TLC. Some music news for you. The Bottle Rock Music Festival in Napa just released their massive lineup. It's happening in May of this year. Metallica, Pink, 21 Pilots, Luke Combs, Pitbull, Bleachers, Alessia Carr, just to name a few. It's a big one. The Foo Fighters have a movie coming out next month. They're uh, they're in the movie as themselves. It's a horror comedy called Studio 666. And the first trailer is coming out today. As soon as we get it, I'll put it up on our Instagram stories. Dua Lipa is kicking off a tour in a few weeks. It's her future nostalgia tour. And we just find out that she's taking a camera crew with her. So you can expect either like a concert film or some sort of documentary from her time on the road. Over in the UK, the Rolling Stones are being immortalized in stamp form to mark the band's 60th anniversary. There's a brand new set of 12 stamps to honor the guys. And we don't know how much he made for it, but John Legend just joined this uh, growing list of artists selling their entire catalog. Uh, Bruce Springsteen recently did this and got about $500 million. Stevie Nicks and Bob Dylan both did it within the last couple years as well. And now John Legend. Some additional headlines for you. Fred Durst from Limp Biscuit was trending yesterday because Robert Durst died. People got confused. Fred is fine. Robert is not. If you're not familiar, Robert Durst was the focus of a uh, popular documentary series called The Jinx. He's a convicted murderer and suspected serial killer. Not a good guy. Uh, He died at the age of 78 in a California prison hospital. All right, I put an insane video up on our Instagram. It's in our stories, again, at First Thing Pod. If you're not following, feel free. Uh, this man, Mark Jenkins, he's a 70-year-old pilot. His small plane just crashed and landed in California, and it landed on train tracks, and police officers showed up, and this is like out of a movie. They struggled to pull him. He was all bloody. Pull him out of his plane seconds before a train came and slammed into it. It's insane. Their body cams uh, caught it all, and it's just mind-blowing. Again, you can find it in our Instagram stories. Starting Saturday, this big one, insurers will have to cover the cost of eight at-home COVID tests per month. Uh, Those things are very hard to find, but if you have insurance and you find one, you no longer have to pay out-of-pocket starting Saturday. And speaking of, kind of like a daily update to the list here, Savannah Guthrie from the Today Show just, uh, just tested positive for COVID. Clay Aiken, former American Idol runner-up, is running for Congress. He said, we need powerful voices now more than ever. He wants to represent his home state of North Carolina. He ran back in 2014 as well. Didn't win. This guy's got to win something one day. Arby's has a new sandwich that's going to make you sweat. If you like spicy stuff, hot stuff, uh, the new Diablo Dare sandwich is so spicy, it comes with the free vanilla shake. And I'm sorry, but Orkin just released their annual list of the uh, the most bedbug infested cities as if we don't have enough things to worry about right now. And for the second year in a row, congratulations, Chicago. Number one, uh, Philadelphia and New York round out that top three. And I end the show with some positivity. Uh, congratulations are in order to Donald Heizinga. He just graduated high school at the age of 98 years old. He just received his diploma after an 80 year Wait, he was drafted back in 1943. He fought in Normandy. He was injured. And while he was recovering, he was captured and held as a prisoner of war. He was eventually freed and made it back home. His wife recently contacted the school board because he said his biggest regret in life was not getting his diploma. So they made it happen. 98 years old. The very cute photo of him holding it up uh, on our Instagram right now. No word yet on where he's applying to college. All right, friends, I'm out of here. Thank you again for uh, for being a part of this thing, for all of the messages and comments yesterday. Please spread the word about this podcast as well if you have any friends that you think might be interested. I'll be back tomorrow, first thing. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Thanks for listening.